Um, thank you everyone for joining. It's really a pleasure spending some time with you talking about NAN and what we are, have been working on. So, um, well, let me share my screen. I have prepared a small presentation for us to go through. So um, if you're having any issues seeing this, please let me know. And okay, so, well, first off who I am. So as Harsh already introduced, my name is Omar. I am one of any 10 senior software engineers. Um, I was born in Brazil. I moved to Berlin to work for any 10 recently. I just got to Berlin last December. Um, uh, and well, as a senior software engineer, I've worked in a few interesting projects in NA10, uh, the scalability part, which we had um, some conversations about previously already, uh, logging, and now working on some interesting projects as well uh, related to the future of node building on NA10, more in the technical part. So some interesting stuff that we'll be coming to. So those are my contact information in case you want to connect, feel free, please. So without further ado, let's go into what are logs. So just to set the level here, um, well, systems usually, uh, logs are a way and messages that a system communicates with you to help you identify what is actually happening under the hood. So for instance, you can be using logs for tracking events that are happening, logging transactions that might be relevant to your system or to your business logic, maybe for audits, um, tracking requests that are happening to your system. So you can, for instance, count user, uh, user usage and perhaps block access or check for malicious actions. So logs are basically a way of the system communicating what is happening, okay? So um, logs can be written and generated in a big variety of formats. Um, some of the most common like delimited with text in case like you have a tabular structure of data, uh, tab del delimited messages, which is like CSV files, um, just plain text, you know, like human readable messages, one, of, one line uh, per instruction, JSON files, CSV uh, that, that I already mentioned, Parquet, which is um, a format that is used by some of the Apache products for parsing and collection of data as well. So logs can be generated in a variety of formats and the format that you're using logs, uh, actually the chosen implementation will vary based on the use case that you'll be using, right? So in NA10 specifically, how do we generate the logs? So we decided to use a JSON format for a few um, interesting points that it provides. First, uh, well, NA10 already uses this JSON extensively. So it's something that most of our users, if, if are not familiar with, will probably super quickly get in touch with and understand how it works and understand the structure. So it easily allows you to um, show and see data in, ver in variety formats, lists of stuff, complex objects, nested information. So this is one of the reasons which we chose JSON. And also because it's becoming more and more popular for logs as more um, it's more and more apps are using it, choosing logs for, for this. Uh, so this is the reason why we chose uh, JSON as a format for NATM logs. So um, I'll go through some of the default settings in NA10. So one uh, important point is that by default to make NA10 super lightweight and not uh, take, uh, take too much uh, disk space, logs are turned off by default. So this is like to make it non-breakable as possible, like no breaking changes. So you can turn those on and we'll go through that in a second. Um, unless you change the location, uh, the logs will be saved inside your .nhn folder in a subfolder called logs. Um, and it will also do what we call log rotation, which means um, the file with the information will grow up to a certain size. When it reaches that size, uh, and it can automatically rename it and create a new one with the hot data. So you always have some sort of archive to go back to if you need. Um, by default, again, uh, and it can use 16 megabytes per file and saves up to 100 files. So you have a very good history of information for this. 
Okay, so now that we know like how any can generate logs and uh, where you're safe, um, how are those log messages organized? What can I expect from the log messages that NA10 generates? Um, we created a simple structure that it's easier to read. So if you're now familiar with JSON objects, will, this will be super familiar to you. Um, we use the level, which is one of those five options, error, warn, info, verbals, and debug. And we'll go through each one of them, those in a second. Uh, the message itself, which is a, usually a human-friendly message, uh, we do our best to make to write messages that can be understood uh, by anyone. So we're writing plain text messages that help you understand what was happening. And there is also an interesting object which we call metadata, which contains a timestamp. So basically, when that action happened, the file and function where NA10 was running at that time. And this really helps a lot when we need to debug something if we have an issue with NA10. And uh, also you can add additional data, like for instance, the ID of the workflow, um, the execution ID at the moment, this, the user session ID. Uh, and session ID in this case, I'm not saying like uh, uh, understanding who is the user, but actually simply a connection between the browser and NA10 so that informa this information can flow. So it's not actually personalizing someone, it's just, it's impersonated data. It, sorry, it's not impersonated data. And so now what are the log levels? Um, so error is the first and like most critical one, which means NA10 is reporting some faulty behavior, which means something went wrong. Uh, those messages are always logged. Um, usually, if you don't change any of the NA10 settings, you will see those in your terminal. Um, and we'll go through the settings in a moment, but those are always visible for you. Second level is warn, which means this is an important message, but not necessarily an error. Um, this could be something like, hey, um, there's a library that was deprecated. Um, there is information about um, some node that needs updating, for instance. So those kinds of messages that are important that need your attention are used as warn. And for general information like, oh, anytime started, anytime is listening to Cortex XYZ, um, I don't know, webhooks have uh, reached so, some sort of information that is more, um, it's not an error, it's not a debug information, it's more like a general information overall. Uh, you have the verbals, which is actually NA10 telling you everything it's doing. So for, uh, I got to remember that logs are messages that the developer add to the code. So um, whenever we as developers or engineers or you as a contributor decide to, hey, uh, this is an important step that I want to check what's happening, you can naturally add those information and we'll talk about that too. So verbals is a way of telling you um, that we reached a certain point, maybe a checkpoint that is interesting, that helps you understand what is happening. And the difference between verbose and debug is that debug also contains more data about the current state. So uh, verbose is like more an overview of where NA10 is going, so where it's heading. Um, and debug is really pinpointing you with a bit more information saying, hey, I'm specifically in this node and I'm taking this action uh, the operation is X, Y, Z. For instance, I'm calling uh, a certain resource. This is a way that helps you really understand exactly in detail what was happening at that moment. Okay. Um, now uh, that we said about it, how, how do we set up logging for NA10? So basically, you would need to look at two different settings. The first one is the log level. It means what do you want NA10 to output? Uh, these are like cumulative. So if you set error, only errors will be shown. But if you set warn, and it can go output errors and warn. So uh, as a consequence, if you set debug, and it can will output all messages to you. So this is one easy way of letting you know, like uh, I want the most verbose one. It's actually like the, the debug. It might be a bit counterintuitive there. Um, and the, the second most important setting is the output. So usually it's just console unless you change it, which means uh, information just being out to your terminal. You can set it to a file or both. So those are the uh, three, three options that, uh, currently available. 
we would love to get more options in the future, um, but there are a few consequences to this, which are adding more dependencies to NA10, making the, the NA10 Im Docker image or the app size bigger. Um, and naturally with, with external dependencies, we have problems with, with security concerns. So we decided for this moment to simply use file and console, which are um, super standard. And if you need to use an external system, you can set up your NAPAN to write information to a file. And there are applications that allow you to read the information from a file and send to an external system like Logly or Logstash for instance, and a few others. Also, um, beyond those two environment, uh, the, those two settings that I mentioned, you can also set the file counts, which I, which I mentioned in uh, the beginning, 100 files. So you can change this number up or down according to your needs. Uh, the maximum size for each file, which is 16 megabytes by default, you can increase or decrease that. We chose 16 megabytes because it's a file that is long enough to store a good amount of data that you can read through and understand what's happening uh, in a good period of time, but at the same time, not so huge that you, can, that you would be unable to open it with like a regular text editor. And finally, the files location. So where do you want the files to be stored? So as I mentioned, uh, they will be stored inside the NA10 home folder, which is like the .NA10 folder, inside the, a subfolder called logs, and the files will be called NA10.log. And when rotated, NA10 dash one, dash two, dash three, dot log. Um, some more information about logging, you can always go to the documentation. This, this contains the most up-to-date information. I'll leave this QR code here uh, for a moment. So if you want, um, you can have a look there, but it's just the um, NA10 documentation. It's super easy to find. If you just type log or login in the search, you will easily find this link. Um, and one important thing that is there that I will not be covering now is that this page also covers, if you're interested in contributing to NA10, how do you use the NA10 tools to add log messages? Or, I mean, to create more log messages. If you see, hey, I'm trying to diagnose something, to debug a, a specific situation, there are no log messages available at this time. So you can easily add more log messages, make a contribution to NA10. As you know, our source code is always open and contributions are super welcome. Um, also, um, well, let's touch a little bit uh, about the logging best practices. So as I mentioned, logs are not saved by default. They are just uh, output to your console. So my recommendation is to um, set any attempt to save those two files so you can easily rely uh, to with the, on those files in the future, whenever you need to debug something or find a situation. Uh, this is super useful for us. Like if you're reporting a, a, an error on NA10, uh, those log files can be super useful in those kind of situations. Um, we do not expose any sensitive information. Like the log messages that we added so far do not expose any sensitive information, like credentials or so. Uh, they, they just try to really pinpoint what is happening, what, the, what are the resources and operations that were happening. So uh, it should be safe uh, to have those files. Although I would really recommend if you're filing a report, please send those files privately uh, as this is the best way naturally. So uh, if this space is not an issue, I would really recommend to use the debug level. It's really the one that contains the most information, which is like the purpose of logs. But if you have a space constraints or uh, some sort of restriction, definitely you can set this level lower or use a debug, but set um, um, the number of files to be smaller. You know. uh, one, also, one another important thing is that, well, those are files. So they're stored um, in the file system and the hard disk. And if you're running an A10 in a container, let's say, and you update an A10, so you spin up another container with an update, you lose the information of the previous container. So. This is one of the reasons you should be using volumes and this is described in, um, in some examples on how to run an A10 uh, to actually map the .NA10 folder from inside your container to your host machine so that you don't lose this data in case the, the container changes. You know? um, so also, if you're unfamiliar with this, please let us know. Uh, if there are examples for this in the documentation, we can help you with this. Um, 
And also like now that you have the files in your file system, it's easy to install external tools like daemons that will upload those files, uh, those logs to external tools like Logstash, Logly, and CloudWatch. Like these are super uh, standard items. And remember, logs are your friends. They will help you in uh, debugging and finding any uh, some useful information in a lot of cases. And we are adding more and more logs every time so that any can is each time more helpful in understanding what's going on and helping us build pinpoint issues. So if you have any questions, please feel free to share. Um, I hope it wasn't too quick uh, and well, thank you.